Hello folks, welcome back. In this video I'd like to run through a little demonstration of how denormalization could work with the loopback framework, or API I should say. I think that this is a database structure that's going to become really common as we move forward and I just think it's probably a healthy thing if we go through this. So we're going to be using the Mongo shell in this one quite a bit. So if I could ask you to open your command prompt or terminal and type in mongo and we'll go on into the mongo shell. So here we go. So it's mongo and then use mydemy and if you do db.comment.find.pretty and I should have these little bracket vibes here. Okay, here we go. So I've got a few comments here. I was just testing it. I don't know if you have any, but let's clear the decks. And the way that we would do that is we would say db.comment.remove. Then you do your normal brackets, as we called them in school. And inside here, we do an empty object. That's going to delete all of the comments, right? Okay, so now we... Hang on a minute. Ah, I had, that was because, do you know why that happened? That happened because the comment was lowercase. I'm going to keep this in, actually. Interesting, right, okay. Right, so that's the vibe, we've now cleared the decks. Now, open up your text editor if you could, and then go into models, and open up, let's see, comment.json. And I know that we have a relation thing here that we set up ages ago. Let's just take that out. So we're now uh, doing this. So no relations. Actually, there should be a comma here. That's the vibe. So if you could go with that vibe there. And that should be us, right? So let's start the server. No dot. And just to remind you, all that's happened there is we have deleted the comments and I've also removed the relations between comments and any of the other models, okay? So it's a fresh start pretty much and as you can see here is the standard comment model, no surprises, right? So let's now go in and establish the relations with LB or LB even relation and we're going to do a relation with comment and comment is going to belong to lesson and we'll hit return, return no and no, that's us and then we'll do lb relation again. Now the, the thing that we just did by the way, we've, we did that before on lesson 5 but I'm doing it again because I want to just you know, do this with a, a clear mind, right? So let's make this a two-way thing. I'm going to say that lesson has many comment and then we'll say return, return and no and no and no. That's good. Okay, so that's two of them done. Now I'm going to do another one, LB relation and I'm going to say comment belongs to and we could do member actually but I'm just gonna say user okay and enter the proper name return return no no and that's us okay now by the way if you're wondering what about the two-way relationship back from users well users is kind of a special one and it does not appear on the list here. We don't want to mess with the user model, you know. So that's going to do for the moment. Let's now say node dot and we'll start this up, okay. So there we go. And I'm just going to refresh this explorer here. Okay, so now if we look inside comments here and you look at post comments you can see that we've got the lesson ID, the user ID, uh, those relationships have been established 
I'm going to just create a few comments now, okay? So I'll just say something like, here is the first comment. And I'll need a lesson ID and a user ID. Now, I'll get that from the Mongo shell, okay? So if we say uh, db.user.find, and I'll chuck in that dot pretty thing. Okay, so I'll go with Chico here. So I'm gonna grab his ID and we'll chuck him in here. And then for the lesson ID, it's db.lesson.find.pretty. And we'll go with this learn HTML. Alexa, stop. I have no idea why that happened. Anyway, we'll go with this HTML lesson four thing. So I'll grab that ID here and we'll chuck that in like so. Okay, so try it out. We now have one comment. I'm going to remove the date here because it's something that the thing will figure, figure out itself. And we'll chuck in a second comment. And a third comment. Okay, so Chico has now posted three comments, and here they are. Okay, that's what they look like. Now that's nice, but the challenge is, in the real world, comments look something like this. This is from GitHub. So you've typically got a picture, then a username, then a comment, you see? And unfortunately, you know, um, something like um, db dot comment. Let's just try this. Dot find dot pretty. Unfortunately, this is a million miles away from what we need. Do you know what I mean? We would really need a username and maybe a picture, maybe even a signature, for this to be good. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can do joins with Mongo, and that's one road you can go down. But in actual fact, the way that we use databases, the way that we build databases has to change. It absolutely has to change. And just in case you're wondering why it has to change, well, very quickly, um, this is from 2015. It's Forbes. And it says more data has been created in the past two years than in the entire previous history of the human race. That was 2015. Here we go, a little bit later, 2016. This article says more data will be created in 2017 than the previous 5,000 years of humanity. And if you want a glimpse into the future, Here's uh, an article saying data is growing faster than ever before and by the year 2020 about 1.7 megabytes of new information will be created every second for every human being on the planet. So you may be wondering, well why should this affect us? Why should this change the way we work? Well, there's a challenge. You see, as our data consumption increases, it's like, you know, it's like one of these Bitcoin charts, right? This is what the data consumption of the human race is like. And I'm just keeping an eye on Bitcoin here. And um, the problem is that in the last few years, we've seen the core CPU frequency growth has slowed. And by the way, this is not some rubbish WordPress blog. This is the Intel website. And in fact, speaking of Intel, Intel says chips to become slower, but more energy efficient. And some of you folks are thinking, well, this is no big deal because we can stack the processors, right? Dual core and quad core and who knows what else is coming up. Well, there are some boffins who are saying that there's a limit to the amount of processors that we can stack. And the speculation is, that we can keep this stacking strategy going for about another five years, and then we're gonna really run into some problems. So, uh, apologies for my squeaky chair. In my opinion, and this is very controversial, but in my opinion, we are approaching 
a sort of IT apocalypse. And anyway, it's going to be quite dramatic. Now, it may take five years, it may take ten years. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm not the only person who thinks that there's a problem and we're going to have to change the way that we write programs and the way that we build databases. I think you're going to see object-oriented programming getting phased out. That will be replaced with functional programming. And on the database front, I think you're going to see the phasing out of relational databases. That's just my prediction. Anyway, let's get on with this. So I'd like you to open up comment.json and we'll copy this body thing and I'm going to add a couple more fields in here. Don't forget the commas now. And we'll make this one say, let's see, something like uh, user or username, whatever works. And we'll make this one say picture. Okay, and as far as required goes, I'll say that that's a false for both of them. They're not required, okay? So with that saved, let's jump into our server here and restart. And while that's restarting, um, I'm going to just do one of those comment.find.pretty things. And I'm going to grab a part that says lesson ID and user ID. This will come in handy. So we just copy that. Head into your explorer and hit refresh. And now... I'm just going to post a new comment. So if we click here, you can see that this is now expecting a body. So that would be, okay, here is another comment for you. Okay, date, well, we can add that or leave it out, doesn't matter. On the username front, I'm going to say Chico. On the picture front, well, the picture front can be pic.jpg, anything you want, actually. And then for the lesson ID, and indeed the user ID, I'm just going to do that. And then we're going to try it out. So, there's our response, everything looks good. And now if we go to the Mongo shell here, and say comment.find.pretty. Now our comment has a lesson ID, a user ID, uh, but we also have a username in here and a picture. That type of structure will enable us to easily build sites like this without doing table joins. However, there's obviously one or two technical challenges here. One of them is what happens if Chico logs in someday and changes his username. Well, that's exactly what we're going to discuss in the very next video.